E aí, galera, tudo beleza? Estamos começando aqui é uma live muito especial com um participante muito especial aqui. Eu vou entrevistar o Jim da Slick Audio. É uma empresa especializada em computadores para áudio. Vai ser uma live muito especial, vai ser uma oportunidade muito legal de vocês entenderem algumas coisas uh, sobre computadores, né? entender a diferença de um uh, processador, quais são as funções que cada coisa tem ali dentro uh, e o que realmente importa né, para o áudio quando a gente fala de computadores, tá? Então, é, a live vai ser toda em inglês, então, se vocês não falam inglês, procurem ativar a legenda automática aqui do YouTube, vai ser a melhor forma da gente conseguir fazer isso né, em tempo real. Mas muita gente aí do áudio fala inglês, então, espero que vá ajudar uma, uma galera boa aí, tá? Eu vou compartilhar esse link aqui, só um segundinho, e a gente já vai chamar aqui o Jim para a nossa live, tá? Então, vamos ver quem está entrando, quem é que está aí já na live. Um, temos aqui alguns espectadores já. Vamos começando então. Bora lá, galera. Bom, eu vou chamar o Jim aqui e a gente começa uh, a nossa entrevista do Crosstalk. Hi, Jim. Welcome to the show. Uh, it's very nice to have you here. Great to be here. Thank you very, very much. Nice. Cool. That's pretty awesome. Uh, for you guys that doesn't know Slick Audio, you should research. We have the link here down in the description. And also, you can, you know, at the end of our interview, you guys can do some questions and uh, put here. We are going to elect like two or three questions uh, to be asked to Jim, okay? Uh, very nice, very nice, Jim. It's a professional uh, uh, audio computer and also musician, right, Jim? <laughs> yes, yes, <laughs> for many, many, many years. Very nice. Please introduce yourself, Jim. What do you do? What is your background and so forth? Oh, God. Um, well, I'm a 55-year-old idiot. Um, no, I'm kidding. Uh, I've got... Uh, I've been a musician, uh, classically trained in piano uh, from age five. Um, my mother was a, a pianist. Um, and then piano, of course, turned into accordion because my dad liked polkas and waltzes. And uh, then I got a guitar for the first time in, God knows, 1977, I think it was, and never looked back. That was like, you know, fear factor for me, man. I love it. Um, Then uh, went off to, uh, so while I was recording and doing all that professionally, uh, I managed to get a couple of uh, college degrees. So I've, I'm an electrical engineer uh, as well as a BSBA and an MBA by degree. So eight and a half years of college. It's uh, almost embarrassing. But um, yeah, so that I, I did touring for a while uh, as, as a lead guitar player. Um, and I've been recording literally from the days of two inch uh, tape and and uh, half inch eight track if you guys remember the old task cams the 88s and uh, the, yeah when I got my first DAW 20 years ago uh, Nuendo version one 1.0 and um, and that was it that was a game changer you know really experiencing to be able to record music and and non-destructive edits and all that and uh, so you know, fast forward 20 years and, and past touring and all that stuff, uh, it turned into uh, having a nightmare with the different computers. Like I'd go to do sessions down in New York or Philadelphia. Um, and you know, when, when you're, when you're a level two and level three guy and you're not a, you know, an A class guy, uh, you know, they pay you for the job. They don't pay you by the hour. And uh, I got really tired of waiting for people's computers to, to reboot. And that was Macs and PCs both. And so uh, six years ago, I said uh, to my VP of sales, I said, you know, we, we need to change the game. We, we've got to create something. I've been doing enterprise IT literally for 38 years. Um, and uh, it, it was time to change the game and turn this into, turn audio into a true professional near zero downtime Mm -hmm. thing nice. and uh so hence slick audio yeah, was yeah. born and um yeah here we are <laughs> cool. cool very nice very nice you've been in at nam the guys uh, some few people that uh are capable or able to go to nam uh, a few times you probably are gonna find 
the gym there and see the new machines that Slick Audio has to present for us. Uh, so yeah, pretty cool. Very nice. Uh, I have some questions for you. I'm gonna go <laughs> kind of uh, to the subject because uh, there are very nice questions that I, that I also have. And people used to ask me a lot about computers because I am one of the, the, the guys that work with audio professionally and uh, works with uh, Windows. So they used to ask me a lot of stuff about Windows and I do my research, although I have my limitations. <laughs> We <laughs> and, all do. Uh, yeah, <laughs> and my ones are, are pretty clear. <laughs> and uh, I wanted to, to know more few uh, things about uh, computers and audio. And I think that everybody will be very pleased with those questions that I've built here because they are not only mine questions, they are also their questions as well. So yeah, one of the questions that I have to ask you, Jim, is uh, how does the computer process work? It's a very basic thing. I mean, uh, like generally speaking, uh, you have uh, all the pieces of hardware that you have inside of it and you have the operational system and how, how does it work? What is the 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 objective of each piece of hardware and uh, what does it uh, uh, relate to audio how does it relates to audio the importance of it okay Th this is not going to be a short answer no, I, i'm sure <laughs> it is not <laughs> so all right so it, it the i'm going to keep this to just basic blocks of the computer so you have obviously the the motherboard right so the motherboard Let's let's think of that as the central highway um, and the traffic lights, you know, so I have to do this to cars for some reason. It just kind of works, you know. Mm -hmm. um, so you have you have this this box right and inside the box is just a pile of gobbledygook, but it's nothing more. The motherboard is really nothing more than the traffic cop for all the data, the signals that are that are being passed back and forth mm -hmm. um, and, and the reliability uh, of that motherboard is so crucial we've found in all the years that i've been doing it the majority of failures and any of you folks out there that that have done anything with computers at all i'm sure you know this already um the majority of failures happens with the motherboard level motherboard fails um and and it's a very complex board so you know i'm not saying that that it should never fail that's impossible but Getting a quality board made and using a quality board is huge. So that that's the that's the, the our roads, if you will, in traffic, right? Then you have the CPU, which is the the brain. So uh, that's basically processing the the instructions that are coming in from the operating system. And I'll get to that. That's a much higher level. Mm -hmm. You have the the RAM, the random access memory. So RAM is random access so it, it's temporary uh, it's used to store procedures and data in a temporary basis it's very fast but it can be very expensive mm -hmm. hence why we don't have you know terabytes of ram we just aren't there yet mm -hmm. uh, and there's a technical reasons why that can't happen either and then you have of course your storage hard drives ssds um you know what you will and and we i'm sure we're going to end up talking about that subject a little bit later yes. so i'll <laughs> I'll, I'll just i'll <laughs> sidestep that for the moment so that that's where your programs are stored so it's permanent storage right so you're, you're either reading from it uh you know i.e a program or a session tracks that you've already cut and that you're listening back so that that's the permanent storage that's where that's for the most part coming from um then you have your your audio interfaces right so that kind of ties in with the motherboard again because you have really you know several main types you've got usb you've got thunderbolt firewire that's kind of dead but you still have mm -hmm, firewire mm -hmm. and uh and then you have pcie so a card that would be actually inside the computer um there are similarities between some of them uh, and others are very disparate. I'm going to leave the FireWire piece completely out just because it's, again, it's a dead technology. Um, so let, let's just sidetrack that. So we have USB and then we have uh, Thunderbolt 3 and PCIe. Uh, so Thunderbolt 
Hello. I, I want to talk about that first because it's really a cool technology. Um, Thunderbolt actually is and acts as part of the PCI oh, bus, interfaces correct. directly with the PCIe bus. Um, and the cool part about that is, is it does not have to interact with the North and South Bridge first RAM. Mm -hmm. You know, it can talk directly to the CPU, which is unlike USB, right? Mm -hmm. So then you have your PCIe cards. They sometimes have to access and talk to the North and South Bridge for the PCIe, and sometimes they don't. North and South Bridge are the chips, that they're the traffic cops, right, on the motherboard. Sorry, I should have explained that before. Um, so definitely is a very fast um, and, and v very good way of, mm -hmm. of having an audio card, but very limited choices today, right? There's a few from Lynx, there's a few from RME, um, and besides those guys, that's about, you know, for the most part, it. I'm sure there are others out there. I don't want to mm -hmm. pick on it too much. I'm leaving the PT stuff out, Pro Tools stuff out just because, Sorry. well, just because. <laughs> um, <laughs> the, the HDX. So uh, that, that basically leaves the operating system, right? So the code. So in, in networking, we talk about the, the seven layers of networking, right? So, you know, you have your layer one hardware layer, layer two is, you, you know, and, and so forth and so on. So now we're going to be talking about these upper layers, layer six and seven, which is your application layer. Mm -hmm. um, and, and basically that's the, the code that's written to make the box, the mm -hmm. stupid zeros and ones, do everything that it needs to do as fast as it can and efficiently as possible to be able to get your data in and out, whether that's audio, whether it's video, whether it's a game, whether it's a Microsoft Word or Excel, mm -hmm. Outlook, it doesn't matter. It all, at the end of the day, ends up being the same thing. Where it gets critical for audio, since this is an audio mm -hmm. show and we're talking audio, mm -hmm. um, it is very important to understand that that latency can be inserted into the computer in many ways. The biggest nemesis that we have in the audio world, computer and audio world, is DPC latency. Um, basically, the computer is a, is a big timed clock, right? So think of your recording studio. And, and you know, if you don't clock all your digital devices mm -hmm. the same, you're going to end up with a lot of stuttering and junk and errors and dropouts and all kinds of weird stuff. Mm -hmm. So really the same thing happens at a computer. It's just way faster and, and way more complex because there's a million little devices in there that need to all talk the same language. So you've got that situation where getting audio in and out of there is not quite as easy as one would think. Um, you've got all the normal computer stuff that's going on. So it, you know, the, the operating system is trying to keep track of the memory the stuff that's, you know, that's on active on the hard drive um, and not just itself, right? It's mm -hmm. operating system. It needs to keep track of itself. Mm -hmm. um, and then uh, so now in between all that other stuff and the display or video, right? In between all that stuff, we've got to get audio in and out of there. Oh, yeah. Real time, you know, <laughs> with, with near zero latency. Mm -hmm. So that's where it's very important to understand that when we tune a computer, there are pieces to tune uh, across the whole spectrum of that motherboard to be able to tell the components, which eventually ends up talking to the operating system to say, hey, uh, you can't interrupt me here or you can't put this on power save. You can't do this, but you can do this and you can do this. And, oh, I want you to do this and this faster. Mm -hmm. So that's what we're doing, tweaking the BIOS, you know, and, mm -hmm. and then tweaking the system we're, we're just yeah. fine-tuning so, so you guys already fine-tuned the bios uh, for a specific functions uh in regards to audio and low latency right absolutely cool. absolutely have to great great yeah. and what about doing this on, on a mac computer is that possible uh no because mac um Mac is is really yeah, a Unix BSD Unix kernel, yeah, right? Yeah. So, and and I'm an old Unix guy, so I love Unix. I love Linux. Um, more more to come on that when we talk next year, which we're going to. I'm going to be uh, probably introducing something new uh, in that realm. But uh, the Unix world and Linux world is very stringent, so there are 
many different flavors of Linux and Unix. Mm -hmm. So Mac's OS really is no different. It's another flavor of Unix, um, you know, with its GUI, with its graphical user interface front end. So uh, they basically hold everything very, very stringent in the way they do things, right? Mm -hmm. The way they control the system, the way they control... Uh, you know, audio going through. So th there's very little you can do. It either works or it doesn't. Uh, and I, I'm keeping that very general. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there are a couple of tweaks here and there, but for the most part, it, you get what you get. Mm -hmm. I see. I see what I mean. Uh, nice. Pretty nice. Very nice. Uh, I'd like to to give a, a, just an advice here for the guys that are speaking in, in Portuguese here. And uh, pessoal... Sure. É, a live está em inglês, mas vocês podem ativar a legenda automática, vai ser a melhor forma da gente conseguir executar. E para a galera que não consegue entender aí, é a melhor forma da gente ter esse conteúdo de altíssimo nível aqui no canal. I was just telling them that uh, there's a way for them to understand the, the ones that doesn't speak in English. Uh, so they can just put the subtitles there, the automatic subtitles. They, they would be like kind of a help for them in a sense but that's yeah. the best what, what we can do to have you here because otherwise would not be able to uh, unfortunately we, we cannot have a, a real-time translator here guys and i'm sorry for that but yeah thank you thank you very I'm, much and i'm sorry i don't speak portuguese my bad no sorry. No, no problem G, no problem let's go let's go <laughs> that's fine you are the invited guy uh so uh, uh very nice very nice sensor so you have a uh, uh, a, a device that is just doing the the you know the signal the PCM digital information and then you have the motherboard that will be accepted will be many many things on the way or it goes directly to the CPU depending on the technology and there's a lot of things going on there mainly in regards to motherboards right but motherboards are they have a kind of a dependent relation with CPU pretty clear one which the socket change and everything changes and some few ones does overclocking and some other ones doesn't and uh, how uh, is that uh, for audio I mean uh, we have uh, like in things that really matter like uh, the RAM itself people talk too much about the frequency of the RAM but they don't talk about the latency of the RAM they don't talk about other subjects they're very important in the way I see things and, I, and I'd like you mm. to explain this a little bit and how does this uh, REM latency or frequency affects the the whole process it, it, ob obviously the the faster the RAM I'm, the I'm better sure. um, but there is a point the, of the no re of, of no um, I'm going to keep this as, as simple as I can a, a point of no return right so you can get so fast and then you know you have the yeah. potential of losing a bit here and there so it, let me explain it a little bit better in the server world and then i'll come back to the exact question for audio and it might make a little more sense so in a in a server um very expensive piece of hardware obviously yeah usually has lots and lots and lots of memory they use what's called ecc memory so it's error checking and correcting memory the reason they do that, oh, and, and also they run it fairly slow, much slower than a desktop computer's memory runs. Why is that? Even though it's processing one heck of a lot more data in any given second or yeah. sub-second, millisecond yeah. or mm -hmm. microsecond, um, it has to do it perfect every time. One mistake and you have corruption of data at a server level. So that's bad. That's really bad. Um so uh, we need to think about, so, so just keeping that general and moving back to the audio, we can afford every once in a while to have a bit get corrupted or get lost. And the computer, for the most part, the software makes up for it. But there comes a point when you start having enough errors come through and the message doesn't get through properly. Mm -hmm. And then when that happens, you know, then there's a retry that happens. That's a DPC call, right? Mm -hmm. um, the delayed procedure call. So that in that delayed procedure call that then now it has to do that whole series of writes and reads all over again. And when it does, you've now 
effectively doubled the amount of time that it's taken just for that one little tiny instruction to get through Mm -hmm. or piece of an instruction to get through. Mm -hmm. So it is important that we don't take the memory speed too fast. Mm -hmm. uh, And it also has to match the motherboard. um, And then CAS latency comes into that, right? So the latency of the memory itself, Mm -hmm. cheap memory tends to have a very high CAS latency. Mm -hmm. Um, that's really bad because then there's inherent problems within the chip itself and then getting the data in and out. So it's not, remember, this is a very choreographed thing that's happening between the motherboard and the CPU and all these components. So to understand that we need to, to keep everything equal. If, if you get any one thing too fast or too slow, that's not in, in, in tune, in match with the motherboard and what the CPU is doing, hence why it's so very important to tweak the motherboard properly. You, you can, a lot of guys will make changes to the motherboard and say, oh, you know, cool, I just increased the frequency of the CPU and, and oh yeah, I overclocked the, uh, the memory, you know, a little bit. And then they don't bother to change any of the voltages on the memory, mm-hmm. you know, and understand that that when you're tr- when you're trying to run faster, you know, the power supply is now taking a beating. So it may have dips in power on occasion. When that happens, you've just corrupted the whole data string. So it, it, mm-hmm. it, it literally one little tiny piece just affects everything else. I mean, so you guitars out there, you know, it, or, or a piano. So anything with a stringed instrument, right? When it starts to go out of tune, I'm a big Floyd Rose guy, so and I keep all my Floyds floating for the most part. So out of 90 guitars, you know, I'd say 80 of them have Floyds on them. And, uh, you know, it, if one string gets out of tune a little bit, the whole bridge is out of tune, the whole guitar is out of tune. So, you know, because of that whole floating. So it, one little tiny thing affects everything. And now your recording gets shot and, you know, mm-hmm. so in the computer, we need to think about that from a memory standpoint that that it is important to know what you're doing when you try to overclock your system and, and especially when it comes to the memory. Great. That's great. Hope that helps. Yeah, yeah, it does. It does. It does. It gets a, it gives a direction. I mean, uh, every, everything has to be in sync. That's the, the most important. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Another question that I have, it's about the, uh, it's also in regards to the AMD RN. Uh, Intel and ARM-based CPUs, uh, the ones from uh, Apple, the M1. Uh, um, yeah. h- how does this affect uh, the, the the people that work with audio? And uh, how, what should we expect uh, from the new rising generation and also from the M1 from Apple? Uh, does it change, I mean, anything in software w- world or uh, how people will be Mac users mainly, uh, you know, uh, waiting for the M1. Is this going to yeah. be cool or hard? Uh, it, it, understanding uh, where the whole M1 came from, um, Apple got tired, Cook got tired of dealing with uh, Intel. Mm-hmm. Um, so honestly, you know, at face value, from an electrical engineer's perspective, there's no real gain between an Intel processor, let's just say, you know, whether it's a, a Xeon work W chip, workstation mm-hmm. chip, uh, an i9 or an i7, you know, it, obviously different speeds there, and, you know, and the M1. I mean, the M1's really was created so Apple could control everything. They could get costs down. Um, is it going to give them a performance increase? I don't think so. Uh, obviously, we haven't really seen you know much of it yet, but um, I don't think you're going to see any overwhelming improvement in anything. And as far as when I was talking about the Linux Unix thing before mm-hmm. and that control, because this is a new architecture, that entire operating system has to be completely, I don't want to say revamped, that's the wrong word, but it, it has to be recompiled. So recompiled means they take all the code the raw code they have there and they compile it on that M1 processor, right? And and that's how they end up with an operating system. Uh, so the coders out there know what I'm talking about. And those of you who are not coders that don't know what I'm talking about, you're gonna have to look that one up because that gets pretty gnarly. I've I've done a few myself in the, in the day and I don't ever wanna do it again. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> so yeah, I, I honestly don't think all when they, that you're going to see uh, a, a big improvement. Um, who knows what the future may bring? Uh, of course, uh, you know if you're aware, there's some new technology from Intel that's going to be coming out in the next uh, eight to twelve months. So we're being told, at least at the the gold reseller value or, or uh, level. Um, mm -hmm. Quantum processing is going to become, I, I think, something of a reality in the not too distant future. So we're being told. And if that happens, it's going to change the, the game completely. Until that happens, I'll believe it when I see it. <laughs> so. Yeah, I see. And the, the uh, AMD uh, platform with the 5950X uh, CPU and those 5,000 series, uh, what do you think about them? And uh, is there any, I mean, uh, Avid uh, doesn't even spec them uh, on their website. They don't, don't, don't mention them. Like, like yeah. they, they talk about Windows, like if only there was uh, Intel processor. So <laughs> it's just like, <laughs> they are it completely ignore AMD. Uh, what do you think about the AMD and uh, Pro Tools or other digital workstation and this really huge capability they have right now? Let, let, I think we should, we, let's talk first mm -hmm. about how audio and, and digital audio workstations deal with plugins and, and, and VSTIs and all that stuff, Great. because that, that will let me segue into that that question Perfect. very well. Perfect. So understand that your digital audio workstation. So I, I'm a Nuendo guy personally, um, I, and Cubase Nuendo. Uh, I do have about every flavor of DAW over in the, the studio is actually over there. Um, but uh, it, they all work the same. Okay. So your plugins are managed by by really the program itself, the digital audio workstation. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm just going to relate it to Nuendo for now, uh, but your DAW. And it manages it by saying, okay, you know, here's, you know, forget the channel thing. This is just a memory. So it's controlling the memory and, and basically saying to the operating system, hey, I'm, you know, we're loading a, a mm -hmm. we're going to load a sub program. And then the operating system says, yeah, you, okay, you have the authority to do that. Hence why, by the way, it's always important in Windows world to make sure that you're running your DAW mm -hmm. uh, as administrator, always. Mm -hmm. So right mouse gotcha. click and run as administrator or set it to run as administrator automatically. Very important, guys. Um, so doing that, uh, you know, it, it's spawning off all these threads, right? So, you know, I have my delay here. I've got oh, 16 cool. choruses there. I've got 28 compressors here. And it's basically telling the OS, hey, I need to load these. And it's sort of managing, along with the operating system, the amount of memory and the CPU usage and the like. Then you have VSTIs, virtual instruments. They, yeah. unfortunately, the VSTI subsystem and the way it's been written only allows it to use one core. One. So even if you have like Vienna Instruments or anything big, um, it still can only use one core at a time. Now, if you have three VSTIs, it's going to use three cores, right? Mm -hmm. You would think. Depending on the DAW and the age of the DAW, it may shove it all down to one and overload your system in two seconds. So you need to make sure that your DAW is set up for multiprocessing. That's mm -hmm. a setting, for example, in Uendo Cubase Studio One, um, Pro Tools, I think, has that in the last couple of releases. And not, by doing so, you're basically limiting the computer, right? Mm -hmm. or, or is the computer limiting the program? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, it's not the computer limiting the program. It's, it's the program yes. itself, by nature, that it can't talk to any more than one core at a time. Mm -hmm. So understand in Windows world, we have this thing called uh, hyper-threading, mm -hmm. which, which is virtual cores. So if you have, like, for example, our, our 4300 series is a 10-core, the base model is a 10-core processor. Mm -hmm. It's an i9 uh, 10-core processor. That's really 20 cores to the DAWs, mm -hmm. 20 cores to the operating system to, to use because mm -hmm. of hyper-threading. So let's just say I had 1,000 cores in a machine, 
impossibility. Well, not impossible. We've got some high performance computing servers that do that. Mm-hmm. Um, but, um, you know, in the, in, it wouldn't matter. You'd never use but one for that VN Instruments instance. Mm-hmm. So one has to question then what's more important, the number of cores or the speed of each core? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I think you need to ask the question yeah, based on the studio that you have. Yes. Is the performance of each core better or is the number of cores better? Mm-hmm. And let me let me get more specific. So if, if you are uh, a, a home engineer, um, have a studio at home, you know, basically, and you're doing a lot of virtual instruments, mm-hmm. it is very important, in my opinion, to have extremely fast cores and less of them mm-hmm. than it is to have more. Mm-hmm. So it, now I'm going to segue over to your to, to answer your question exactly about AMD versus Intel. Mm-hmm. I don't think it's a versus at all. Um, it, it all comes down to the stability and clock speed of that uh, of your processor, mm-hmm. right? So w- we've done we did some experimental AMD procs. We did the 16 core. We did the 12 core. Nice. Um, they were the 3300 series that, by the way, are not on our website because they're never going to see the light of day. Um, <laughs> As as they were great machines for gaming, they were not great machines for audio compared to the i9 counterparts. When we bench tested them side by side, the Intel i9 blew it out of the water. Just blew it out of the water. It it wasn't even, it was in excess of three times faster. (laughs) So I have to look at that as a builder and, and someone who's, you know, trying to educate and suggest and say, I've already done the testing here T- on our bench. Tweaking the motherboard, right? Tweaking the BIOS. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, tweaking it to, to mm-hmm. as far as we could. And, and we had a lot of crashes with the AMD. Um, I'm not saying it's not bad for everyone. You know, it, look, every shoe has a, a, fo- a foot, you know, the foot goes in it, right? Yeah, yeah, so, you know, in in the case of AMD, it's not a bad processor. They're great. I've been dealing with AMD for a long, long time. Mm-hmm. I've got my Ferrari jackets and Ferrari shirts upstairs from AMD. <laughs> They're a great company. Phenomenal company. We use their video cards mm-hmm. exclusively, uh, their WX series. Um, so I have nothing bad to say about the company, but I have to look at it from my business and my customers' mm-hmm. well-being they're spending money on a slick audio computer. I need to give them what I feel in my heart of hearts and, and in my mind, the best possible product to make music. Mm-hmm. And that's what we're doing. And we, we stick with Intel. So, you know, again, it's not, it's not a bash against AMD in any way, shape or form. I, I think, mm-hmm. I think it's going to improve over time yes. and I think they're going to get better and you know, it's, they go better and then uh-huh. Intel gets better then they get better. And that's been going on for cool. forever now, it seems like, right. And we are, the, uh, we have the benefits of it, right? <laughs> exactly. That's the cool yeah. Thing. We win. They, they have a war between each other and, and we win, yeah. but uh, <laughs> that's the, yeah. that's the now who knows what, yeah, who knows what next year will bring? I mean, maybe you know AMD comes out with the uh, you know with a newer proc, and we bench test it against you know Intel's latest, and it and it blows the Intel out of the water. Well, guess what? And the thirty three hundred series or thirty four hundred series, whatever it is, will be mm-hmm. you know very alive and well. Cool, so. awesome. Uh, we have another question here. I have another question here. Uh, yeah, what is the best? operational system in regards of performance considering you have the best hardware available i mean you buy the best mac you know <laughs> uh, mac pro the best one and then you the, do the best this, this sounds... audio computer and you yeah. bench them in uh, tell, tell me i mean yeah. uh, Tell me exactly what 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 does the operational yeah, system work? And and uh, uh, do you have any bench tests like that? Have you done things like that? And uh, yeah. tell me what is the best results you got for the same? Okay. You know, top 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 top. <laughs> Not considering yeah, price. And, let's say we we have a infinite yeah. money. Let's say. <laughs> <laughs> so it, the new the new Mac Pro, right? The uh, the cheese grater um, it is is a great machine. I mean, it, it, 
<clears throat> architecturally, it's using an Intel Xeon W mm -hmm. chip. Um, I could build that same exact machine using Intel Xeon Ws. Mm -hmm. Intel came out with the, the i9 X series chip. It's basically the W series chip um, minus uh, four lanes, PCIe lanes. Mm -hmm. So it's for all intents and purposes in what the operating system and how hot we can run these things, it, it's virtually identical. Mm -hmm. So that, so understanding that, that the X series processor from Intel really is a Xeon, it, it's, uh, yeah. you know, at its core and the way it works, it is a Xeon processor. Mm -hmm. So they took the W's from last year and said, Hey, we're going to make a consumer chip called the X series. Mm -hmm. And, and we're going to make it for the gamers that, that don't need it anyway. So K series is fine for a gamer. Mm -hmm. um, I'm a gamer too. So I, <laughs> cool. uh, so we did bench testing uh, with the cheese grater when it first came out um, and, and its price tag, which I just cringed at. But, you know, we, we had it was borrowed and mm -hmm. <laughs> I didn't own it. And uh, I can't remember what flavor of uh, Mac OS it was running. Um, it's not the latest. It was the one right before that. Um, and I, I'm sorry, I'm not overly Mac. Uh, uh, OS friendly and competent. So because I make windows boxes, um, <laughs> yeah. when we did the testing, let me put it this way. Our, our $5,000 computer handily beat a $20,000 Mac pro, yeah. uh, exactly. in exactly. audio and mm -hmm. the bench test that we were using at the time, uh, was pro tools. And then we also did a new endo test. New endo I was more interested in obviously. Um, now this was native, so not HDX. We were running okay. Thunderbolt cool. interfaces, cool. Universal Audio cool. Thunderbolt cool. interfaces, cool. and the the honest to God that the Windows box beat it handily. Now the Mac Pro had 96 gig of RAM. We had 128. Mm -hmm. Now honestly, guys, for what we were bench testing, we weren't stressing it with virtual instruments and 8,000 mm -hmm. plugins. We were trying to see. It was a 48 track session that had a minimum of two plugins on each track. So we were in excess of a hundred plugins running the session and we wanted to see, you know, what the, the round trip latency of the, uh, of the uh, interface was again, uni universal audio. Mm -hmm. Um, and I did cheat. I tested it with an RME as well. <laughs> so I like RME. Um, and, and we actually, we actually got very, very, very similar results where the PC was shining was with the number of plugins that we could get into the machine without having an issue. Mm -hmm. And I found that really strange because Unix being a very stable operating system, mm -hmm. and yes, Mac OS again, guys, is, is Unix, right? So I, I was just really surprised to see the data that I saw. Um, there were times when the Mac, you know, would beat it. Uh, you know, at a hair on graphics mm -hmm. because it was running a Thunderbolt video. Mm -hmm. We were running a dedicated card uh, as opposed to running through Thunderbolt. But then when the audio got really intense okay. and we were trying to push higher sample rates, that's when the Mac bogged down and, yeah, and the, the PC went down. high and, and just did it. Mm -hmm. So, again, I don't think there's a right or wrong. Um, you like what you like. You use what you use. You're comfortable with what you're comfortable with. Mm -hmm. If you are a diehard Mac person, you that's you've got to have it because you've got to have it. Mm -hmm. I have to have a Corvette. I drive a Corvette, and and why? Because I got to have a Corvette. <laughs> that's my favorite car <laughs> in the world. And damn it, I'm driving. So, um, cool. <laughs> you know, so mm -hmm. you know, if that's your thing, I mean, do it. Uh, you know, it? there's there's no right and wrong here. Perfect. It's I look at it as a question of how much money am I spending for yep. to, to get a professional's job mm -hmm. done, but whether it's professional or non-professional, mm -hmm. right? That computer, regardless of how much you spend on it, has a limited life. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if you get 10 years out of a computer, you're doing great. Uh, and, and granted, there are occasionally people that you'll see, you know, get 12, 13 years and they're pushing these old 2006, 2007 Mac pros, right? <laughs> and, and, and believe me, we hear them. We hear from them all the time because they're always saying, "Oh my God, this thing's so damn slow." You know, I need a new machine, and it crashes all the time. And then they either buy a new Mac or they buy, okay. you know, our machines. Now, 
when you get away from the Mac Pro. So I, I hope I answered the, the great, great. You did, you, you did. know, the like the like. Yeah, 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 definitely. So once you once you get out of the out of, you know out of the the mega million dollar Mac Pros and you start coming down to like the iMac Pro, which really to me is the only other, you know, thing. Mm -hmm. If you if you look at five thousand dollars in iMac Pro, which is pretty much what you need to spend mm -hmm. in order to get a decent one to do audio, mm -hmm. and you spend five grand with us. We'll run that thing around the, the block at least three times faster. So that that when I made the comment before about being three times faster, that that's real. Sorry, that's what I was referring to. But coming back to it, you you just get more more bang for your dollar, mm -hmm. more bang for your buck. You know when you're going the the, the Windows PC route. What performance for what you pay, right? Yeah, for what you pay, and and honestly, you know you could buy two of our computers. Uh, you know, for, for the same price that you bought oh, one Mac. So God, you. even if you wanted to do sessions that were over 2,500 right, tracks, right, I, I've got, I don't know if you guys know, do you know Virgil Donati? Oh. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The drummer. All right. Yes, so yes, Vir yes, sir. Yeah. So Vir Virgil's a dear friend of mine and, and he's one of our endorsees. And yeah. um, he was a big Mac guy up until he met me a year ago. Okay. And uh, Marco Sfoli okay. and, and uh, Alex Argento, they're all endorsees, all right. good friends uh, of, of mine. Okay. And they were like, um, you know, I, they were on the tour bus the one day in a, in a van and they were they were jabbing him saying, you know, you're going to use a slick audio computer someday. And he was like, and way, you know, and uh, well, sure enough, it was a couple of months later. He called me and said, uh, hey, Jim, uh, uh, you, you're still interested in sending me a machine. <laughs> so I did. He, he did a, uh, a performance. Um, as you know, he's he's quite the perfectionist mm -hmm. and uh he did uh, a performance that was, uh, I believe, over 2,000 tracks Whoa. on one of our machines, and uh, he couldn't even take it to his Mac in his in the the, the other studio next to it, Studio B. And I just had to smile and say, "Told you so." And um, and then if you wanted to take it one step further, you could get another machine. Remember, I said two for the price of one. You get a second machine and and slave all your VSTIs on that. Mm -hmm. And now, you know, 5,000 tracks. What do you want to do? Mm -hmm. Which is crazy. You're never going to see that, right? I mean, five thousand tracks are like ninety-nine point nine nine. Yeah, it's just uh, an abuse for the computer. Let's try the computer, <laughs> and then you put five thousand. That's the only the only option. It's a, yeah, yeah. It's a laughable test. So yeah. uh, so let's let's not even consider it a test. But <laughs> the fact is, you can do it, and you know it's what's practical, right? So most folks are doing cool. what twenty-four to sixty tracks, fifty tracks. Yes, that's pretty big project is is still less than 100 tracks yes you know and even the monster projects in the in the pro studios that we work with i mean they might hit 100 120 yeah might you know i mean i know michael jackson's tipped that scale a few times with quincy but holy moly Track, tracking with that uh i mean in real time uh being able to use the dsp of the computer is just like <laughs> I, I want to see this. I haven't seen personally uh, this, but uh, uh, tell, tell me about it. Uh, how do you see DSP uh, in regards to the uh, uh, using the CPU from the computer and an external CPU uh, and a proprietary proprietary uh, DSP? What do you think about this? Uh, do you think? Oh, it's, it, what is the it's future? Beautiful. It's beautiful. I think you're going to see more and more of it. Cool. Um, it, look, you're you're offloading, you're offloading all that extra processing power, right, on, onto a DSP, um, and that is so important. I think, I, I, again, I I run an RME interface, um, uh, UFX Plus. Um, I also have an X8 to X16 UAs. Um, I and I run UAD, an Octo2 card inside my machine. I mean, they're both of them have DSP. Mm -hmm. um, RME doesn't really shop theirs that much, but they do have it. A mm -hmm. And um, and there's another interface. There's a Zentour uh, yeah. Synergy Core that's sitting in my yeah. desk cool. here. Yeah. So I mean, they're they're all it, they're all starting to move towards the DSP route. The writing's on the wall. It's going to happen. Mm -hmm. So as a consumer, you need to pick the one. <laughs> <laughs> excuse me. <laughs> The one brand that you want to go with. So Universal Audio is the oldest, right? They've they've been around the longest with DSP, mm -hmm. uh, and you could say Pro Tools has been too. Yes. Um, HD system. Pro, yes. 
Yeah, the HDX, I mean, you know, HD in general, and, and Lord knows with this change, it's probably going to change again. So everybody get out your wallet and checkbook because you're going to need to write another check to UAD for, for new software and hardware, no doubt. Um, and I think that really upset a lot of people last time. That's another thing, by the way, I'm afraid of uh, the AAX stuff. Remember when they changed the AAX yes. and everybody had to repurchase it? Yes. Don't be a bit surprised that doesn't happen again. And, uh, and <laughs> remember in the beginning when I said I wasn't a big fan of Avid? Yes, <laughs> Pro I, 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 I'm either. <laughs> I'm not either. <laughs> yeah, that's why. Uh, so, yeah, I like the VST standard that was created as an open standard, and, mm -hmm. and I like open standards. That's cool. that's a good thing. So DSP is going to be huge. It is huge. It's going to be bigger. Um, and, uh, you know, whether it's universal audio, whether it's antelope audio, mm -hmm. um, RME, uh, and, uh, take your pick, but I think you're going to see, you know, there's already several that are out there, mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> and they're awesome. I, we've got majority of them here in the, in the studio that we, you know, have to test and play with and make sure that they work cool. and, uh, and, you know, and work well with our computers too. So, oh, uh, nice. so believe me guys, we're not just selling stuff and telling you that it works. We know it works as we're testing it and uh, we can't test everything that we try, cool. but, um, yeah, I think you're going to see that become, you know, sort of the the de facto standard that DSP will become uh, cool. just part of life. Cool, cool. That doesn't mean that you can't use a native plug, yes, right? Yes. You still mm -hmm. can. That, that's the cool part. So you can use native. You can use, if you have UA, mm -hmm. you know, you could use like the Octo 2 card. Perfect. And then you could have an antelope interface and use all three. Perfect, perfect. They are in sync Everybody. and you can use them uh, if you have the buffer and the clock synced, you, you can go forward and that's fine. Yeah, yep. that's nice. That's nice. Uh, it also, what are the differences uh, between using AMD and Intel in regards to the RAM? Uh, there are people that use virtual instruments and they have a lot of stuff uh, going on. And AMD has the option to do some tweaks there on the RAM speed and uh, overclocking it and doing some stuff that doesn't really work with Intel because I don't know why, <laughs> but it seems like the architecture itself it, is different. So I don't know if it is. Uh, I'd it, like to, you to answer, please. <laughs> sure. Yeah, actually, it, it can be overclocked in the Intel side because we do it. Yes. Um, mm -hmm. it it's uh, it's harder to do, um, and it can it can get unstable if you don't if you're not careful, you know, and make sure that your settings are are like right on the money. Um, AMD definitely has a, I would say a small advantage there. Mm -hmm. So again, virtual instruments, you know, we're, we're back to that whole, what's, mm -hmm. what's better to have more cores or, and, you know, because the more cores you get, right, the more heat is generated in the computer, yes. in the CPU, and then you can't cool it. Mm -hmm. So you can only clock it so fast and then you hit a point of, you know, overheat mm -hmm. and, and then it thermals down and. You can either bake the chip or, uh, you know, <laughs> you just wasted a lot of money. Um, so I, I don't, I just don't have a solid opinion because every person that's out there, every user is totally different. Mm -hmm. You know, if you're a live performer and you're going out there with a, you know, a controller or two and a keyboard and you've got, you know, your, your five, six, seven, eight go to VSTIs, right? Mm -hmm. Virtual instruments. I would much rather see you have, uh, you know, an eight or 10 core system. Remember, they're, they're hyper threaded now, so that's mm -hmm. really times two, right? So it's 16 or 20 yes, yes, cores. Good. I'd rather see that running as fast as it can at, at near five gigahertz, which is how we ship our machines, mm -hmm. you know, than a 16 core system running at, at 3.8, 3.9 overclock because the, the, the other system's going to just kill it. I see. Again, we, you've got to deal with that whole VSTI one core. I can only talk to one core. So therefore, in order to get my sound out as best yes. and quick as I can, you know, it's got to be fast. And, and, it has and the, to be. the DSP, I mean, uh, the processing, real time processing like equalizers and compressors, not VSTI, but VST. Uh, they place, uh, depending on the software, of course, but they place uh, in different cores, right? The the processing they take different cores processing depends on the plugging as well i think but uh, they, they used to place different plugins in different places i use uh, a lot of acoustic audio plugins and they are pretty heavy 
And okay. uh, when I work with them, I, I, I used to take a very careful look at my processing, uh, you know, demands there. And how does those plugins instance uh, instantiate or are being hosted by the software and placed on the cores of the CPU? So it, in, in uh, again, I'll, I'm going to speak in Nuendo terms just because I'm most yeah. familiar with it. Um, when, my bad, Dream Theater. <laughs> cool. And I forgot to turn off my phone. <laughs> that, so. That's fine, that's fine. It's off now, guys. So. Cool. Um, yeah, where was I? Okay, yeah. so the, the, the DAW, as I said before, it's a choreograph between the DAW and the operating system, mm -hmm. right? So the digital audio workstation is going to say to the OS, hey, I, I'm bringing on another sub-program, okay. a plug-in. Mm -hmm. So cool. plug-in is, is a sub-program. It's a little program running within the program. Mm -hmm. So And it says to, to, to the operating system, all right, mm -hmm. I'm bringing this on, but I'm going to control it. Mm -hmm. So it attempts to control the spread on the cores. Cool. And it does a fairly good job. Some do better than others. Mm -hmm. I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna let you guys kind of mull on that one because I don't want to do hurt. Another question about still. it. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, that's um, some do it much better than others. Some really don't do it well at all. Um, and unfortunately, there's no way to directly control that. that. That's the DAW's responsibility to say, you know, hey OS, here it is, and this is where I want you to put it or this is how I want you to spread the load out, it doesn't necessarily tell the the operating system exactly where it's going to go. The operating still, the system still has ultimate authority. And it can, you know, it can request all it wants to. The dog can request all it wants to, but the OS can still say, mm, no, mm -hmm. you're going here. You know, or no, you're sharing a core. I mean, it, there's, because remember, the operating system isn't just thinking about that audio, and what's going on in the DAW. It's thinking very much about everything else that it's got to do across the whole board, mm -hmm. you know, from video and mouse and keyboard. And I mean, think about it. There's a myriad of things mm -hmm. going on. If you're using, uh, you know, control surfaces, all the MIDI that's flowing in and out to be able to drive them. Mm -hmm. And guys, even if they're USB, that's still MIDI. It's USB the MIDI converter. Mm -hmm. They all talk MIDI. So Mackie Control Pro protocols, you know what I mean? Yes, all the yes. QE protocols, yeah. it's all MIDI. So... There's a lot going on, and the computer is ultimately operating system. Sorry, is ultimately responsible for what is how it's throttled, how it's happening. That's why it is so important to tweak the operating system as best you can. Mm -hmm. But your DAW can still be your Achilles heel if it doesn't know how to to handle the workload well. Great, 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 cool. Hope that makes sense. No, it it, it's it very does. generic, it you know, but. It, and it just in terms of uh, digital audio workstation, which uh, which are the ones that you've seen uh, handling better the processing from plugins? I mean, uh, I had some tests here. I opened my my <laughs> my same exactly same template in one door and then in another one, and it was a huge difference. Uh, oh. Yeah, and. I want to. I want to hear from you. What is? What is? What are the ones that are taking a better uh, performance from plugins? You know? I, I have. I have to be careful because I don't want to get any. Because uh, remember, we're resellers for, oh, of for most of them. I don't want them getting mad at me. No. But uh, <laughs> hey, the truth is the truth is the truth, and and Jim always talks the truth because that's just how I am. <laughs> um, cool. Persona Studio One has done a phenomenal job. Those guys have just, they're rock stars when it comes to this. So it, now understand, they're the old Steinberg guys, right? Mm -hmm. So Cubase, Nuendo, um, you know, the, the original developers of that, that's who started to build Studio One and for them version one. So I'm a big fan. They're very, very good program. Uh, Rick Nockfee, uh, my hat's off mm -hmm. to you. He's a good friend of mine as well. Uh, Rick has one of our machines in his studio. Nice. nice. So, uh, I know him as well. Uh, I speak with him about the, the software as well. I use Studio One, actually. I didn't tell you this before. Let, let, oh. let me make, make it clear for our audience. I use Studio One, but we didn't spoke about it. All right. <laughs> oh, <laughs> we haven't no, spoken that, about it. I mean it. Folks, that was not planned. It was not planned. Not planned. <laughs> um, so yeah, no, there. That's S one is is it, it was just brilliantly designed and and but really on the the on the foothills that 
Steinberg already built. Mm-hmm. I mean, mm-hmm. it, it's tough to beat the original at its game, and they are the original. You know, regardless of what the the, digi- the old digit design, <clears throat> Avid digit design, mm-hmm. folks say uh, Steinberg created. It. They created the VST, mm-hmm. you know, and then digit design came out, did their thing, and the proprietary and the crashes. And believe me, I I suffered that in so many recording sessions when we were in the transition between two inch tape. You know, and that I, I was begging to record on the Ampex two inch decks and the Revox two inch decks. You know, because as soon as I'd see freaking Digidesign, I'd be like, oh my God, I'll be here for three days, you know, cutting one track. I rather cut the tape. <laughs> oh, Jesus, Mary. It, it was terrible, terrible. So uh, I, I think those those three applications really, I think, do it the best. Cool. Um, cool. I, I, you know, Pro Tools, it's kind of difficult to. To look at Pro Tools because remember they have their own proprietary plugin, yeah. but I don't think they do a very good job at all uh, at that. Um, we've I've tested enough on my own, you know, running native over there and and just pushing the daylights out of it, and and it just seems to overwhelm the first couple of cores before it starts to spill over, you know, and take advantage of the balance of the cores that are out there. And I just I don't understand why they just haven't grasp that concept that hey mm-hmm. you know guys you got to do some memory management here mm-hmm. and uh i mean it's the coders hey hey, hey pro tools coders get your lazy butts in gear and, and get some you know get, make the code better guys you've been around a long time you know definitely maybe you ought to go work for steinberg for a while but um so th- then you have you know the smaller ones um you know i like fruity loops and you know fl studio mm-hmm. sorry it's still fruity loops to me um uh, sonar which is now what what do they, what do they call it i, I that think now? it's cakewalk band lab or something like that uh, probably it is that's right band yeah band lab took them back yeah that or took them over that was i, I remember using cakewalk or way early on yeah too, they have their own proprietary uh, uh type of uh, plugging i mean the dxi i think uh, dxi yeah. uh <laughs> i don't know if it's still okay. around or I don't know. I don't think so because the last couple times that we installed it for some some folks, uh, customers of ours, they were using VSTs. Mm-hmm. Now whether it uses both, I don't know. Um, but I don't think it did a phenomenal job at uh, at managing that. Um, I think when Sonar was out, like version two, uh, it, version three, even version four, that that was that was pretty solid code mm-hmm. uh, and and seemed to handle it really well. But I never pushed it like I have the other mm-hmm. ones. Mm-hmm. So, um, but yeah, I mean, cool. I didn't touch on everyone, but I touched on the, the biggies, I thought. Yes. Did I miss one? No, no. The, the, I mean, I, there are lots around there, out there, because yeah, we, we have a lot of one, new ones also coming on. So they're just yeah. like uh, Ableton, uh, Logic, and this kind of stuff. Logic has its own technology for plugins uh, as well. And what do you think about it? Does it feel good? Or? Logic, I mean, Logic ha- has, it's Apple only. Yes. I mean, so so when you're in a controlled environment and and the situation is controlled, it's easy to write something, you know, yes. that, that's going to perform well. Um, cool. And, and, you know, so in fairness of, to, to the PC folks, um, mm-hmm. you know, you... you You've got an operating system and programs that are designed to run on a myriad of hardware, mm-hmm. right? Whether it's a slick audio box or a Hewlett Packard or a Dell or a mm-hmm. XYZ company, it does, it'll run on all of it. And I'm not necessarily saying it's going to run well, but it will run on all of it. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's the beauty of, of that more open. It's not truly open architecture, Linux is, um, but it, it's more open, right? So, so that yes. they're not... They're not telling you exactly what hard we have, hardware you have to buy, you know, and, and Apple is doing that. So they're controlling. They have a very tight, controlled environment. So when you're working in that little box, mm-hmm. you know, that's great. And you can control everything that happens in the little box. But there's times when you need to work out of the little box uh-huh. because because something won't work in it. And and that's where I find the the Logic Pro argument. You know, mm-hmm. if it works again, if it works for you, great fantastic you're happy with it keep using it but there are situations where people may want to stretch outside of that and and there are things that don't run on apple mm-hmm. 
You know, just like there's Apple things don't run a PC, there's PC things that don't run Apple. So, cool. and and of course, then the argument would come in, well, you can run, you know, boot camp and, and no, yeah, good luck with that. <laughs> <laughs> if we're running audio, good luck with that. Can you boot and run Microsoft Word? Yeah. Absolutely. Can you run audio well? No, you can't. I've tried it. It does not work well. And, uh, Period. People were still doing some hacking dosh as well. Uh, uh, what do you uh, think about this? <laughs> I mean, they, they trust more in Hackintosh than uh, a PC because the operational system. What do you think about this? Because it is a fact. It does happen with a lot of friends of mine and that, no, no, I'm, I'd rather do a Hackintosh. I'm going to do a Hackintosh. And I'm telling them, you don't have to be worried about Windows 10. You just have to understand it and tweak it. And they say, oh, I, no, I it's too too hard to understand. But... I don't think so. I have two words to say about it. It's illegal. Yeah. <laughs> it's illegal. So, no, I do not condone it because it's illegal. Um, you know, and, and don't ever attempt to upgrade your operating system, which you know <laughs> in the Mac world, guys, you're constantly getting pushed to the next version. Mm -hmm. So, you know, in Windows world, I mean, we've been running the same operating system for seven years now. Yes. Um, I can't say the same for Mac. I mean, they've changed, what, 10, 12 times since then? Yes. We're in the same one. So I, I, we don't have those interoperability Javi, issues. So Catalina and so forth, yes. Yeah, it, you know, it, it, it just kind of makes me a little mental with it. So it, it, Hackintosh, I understand what they're trying to do. They're comfortable with an operating system, right? Mm -hmm. And if you are comfortable at OS, then just buy Mac. Yes. Do it legal and buy the Mac. Mm -hmm. and, and then you won't have to worry about your upgrades or, or anything else. It'll just it'll just work, especially with the M1s coming out. Those days are gone anyway. Right. Mm -hmm. So Hackintosh is pretty much a dead duck <laughs> before it even stood up. And, and I think that's, by the way, I think that's another reason why Apple right. wanted out. I mean, look, the audio audio community is, is teeny tiny, mm -hmm. but there have been a lot of people that have been creating Hackintoshes for things other than audio. All right. And uh, so, you know, Apple wanted out of that in its entirety. So they got it. Great. You know, the M1's coming. They're, eventually, you're just not going to see that anyway. Cool. So w let me ask the Hackintosh people or the people who have even thought about it. What is your primary goal of having a computer with a digital audio workstation on it? And, and uh, obviously, it's a rhetorical question, right? <laughs> it's a loaded question. Yes, it's, it's to make... <laughs> Music. Can you make music on Windows or on Mac? Yeah. Okay. Guys, Windows is just an operating system. Mac OS is just an operating system. I don't care what the bits and bytes are underneath it. At the end of the day, I need to make music. I'm a musician. Mm -hmm. And as long as I can reliably make music and keep it as inexpensive and productive money making as possible, right? And money making from the musician standpoint. Mm -hmm. Let's face it, we musicians are not paid well, mm -hmm. you know? So as long as I can make the most amount of money and keep my costs down, isn't that the smart way to run a business? <laughs> Shake your head, yes. yes. <laughs> you know, so you, you can, look, you can get mad at me all you want for making the statement, yes. but. Guys, music is a business. Mm -hmm. You know, it may be your fun and your pleasure, mm -hmm. but at the end of the day, it's still a business. And to the people who are making money on it, whether they're selling you a plug-in, whether they're selling you a computer, uh, whether they're buying your music um, or, or producing the music, mm -hmm. it's a business. Mm -hmm. It's out there to make money. It's not just there to put somebody on the front cover of Rolling Stone magazine, <laughs> Definitely you know, which, by the way, they make money on. Yes. So, you know, you've got to take this back to the business basics and say, OK, I need to produce music as reliably, as safe, as quick and legally as possible. Mm -hmm. So therefore, does it really freaking matter what operating system I'm running? <laughs> Answer, no, it does not. Yes. It, I'm very appreciative oh, about that because it, it, it's look, I, I'm an before Windows and Mac were ever born. I'm an old Unix guy. Yes. So I trained on SGI Irix. If you guys remember Silicon Graphics, right? <laughs> so I go back to, to those days and was coding. Uh, you DOS know, I worked and so forth. Oh, way before DOS. Anyway. <laughs> I mean, so when DOS, yeah, I mean, you, you got to understand. I mean, even Linux, when uh, 
when Linus was doing the, the you know, I, the Slackware, I mean, I was one of the first guys working with him on the Slackware, you know, compilations. That's what I said when I was compiling. I didn't ever want to do it again. That was it. <laughs> um, but the, the fact of the matter is just an operating system. Mm -hmm. it, it, it's your structure. It's a, you know, it's the matrix, right? Mm -hmm. you, you, you know, so nothing happens within the matrix without the, the, the code, right? The DAW. So, you know, the, remember the, the, the movie, The Matrix, so the pretty girl red and the red dress walking down the street? You wouldn't have that if it wasn't for the DAW, and it has nothing to do with the operating system at all. Yes. You know, I, and I'm, I'm saying, you know, because I can run Uendo on Mac and I can run on Windows, so yes. that's a moot point. I can run on either computer and I can reliably make music. Uh, Chuck Ainley, you know, he, he, he's been back and forth, you know, in the PC Mac world. He's on the Mac right now, but he's going to be coming back to PC. We've been talking to him, um, you know, at some point in the near future. And this is the guy that Dire Straits, you know, and, and some big, big names under his, you know, yes, him. Yes. He's a new one. Mm -hmm. So the fact of the matter is, is there are major, major, major professionals that are using Windows today. Mm -hmm. And if it's good enough for them, it's good enough for you. It's good enough for me. It, it's and, and that doesn't mean it's the end all be all. Mm -hmm. If you still want that Mac and you feel comfortable with it, there's a lot of professionals that are using that. Yes. You have to pick what is best for you and what you're most comfortable with. But God almighty, don't be afraid of an operating mm -hmm. system. It's just an operating system. That's it. Perfect, perfect. And also, the tool you're going to be using is actually the uh, digital audio workstation, as you mentioned. And uh, actually, most of the interface uh, usability is completely the same. So what does it, what, what does it make sense to, to switch from one to another one uh, rather than, I mean, rather than money and power processing, right? And uh, efficiency. And even then, I mean, you know, from a power standpoint, I mean, honestly, I can give you more power than, than the Mac's going to give you. And, and even if you bought a 28 core, you know, let's just say the $50,000 Mac Pro, mm -hmm. 28 core version of it, it it'll load it up with memory. You're still not going to use all of it anyway. You, you, you just won't. You're, you're wasting your money at that point. And, you know, and that that's foolish because the computer is only going to last so many years. And you're going to buy another one, in, you know, regardless. Yes. <laughs> so, you know, you start to question that. And, and by the way, when I mentioned Virgil before, you know, his ears are probably burning right now. So I, I need to give him a call. Uh, he, he, man, I can't do it later on tonight. It's too late <laughs> his time. He moved back to Europe, by the way. So uh, right. he's over in Europe. I see. Uh, so, yeah, I'll have to call him tomorrow. But, um, you know, we, he moved from Mac to PC, as I'd mentioned before, and he was scared to death. And when he pulled up, you know, his dog, uh, it, it was funny because he's like, oh, it looks the same. Uh -huh. <laughs> what would you, you expect it to look like, you know? And, and he said, oh, and he just and he's moving away, doing everything that he did before. <laughs> but then he got out of the dog and he was like, oh, my God, how do I shut down? All right. If you can't figure out how to shut down, then call us and we'll show you how to shut the computer down. So, I mean. And, and file transfer, the same thing. But once I showed him the 10 or 12 things that he needed to do on a day-to-day -day basis, in a week's time, he was golden. He was absolutely golden. And never even, and he, he just turned around and he said, Jim, I, I'll never look back. That was it. That's great. That's great. I, I, didn't make him, I didn't make him switch. He asked me. That's the most uh, interesting thing, I think, because... Uh, most of the audio guys, uh, we have a lot of mix engineers and, and people that work with this uh, as in our, our audience. Uh, so they don't really use the operational system for m so many things like uh, file transfer, uh, email, uh, uh, I mean, social media like uh, yeah. Facebook or something. And, and, <laughs> and then they are. And that has nothing. And that has nothing to do with the DAW. Exactly. You know, exactly. I mean, tra transferring files does, obviously, yeah. you know, but it's outside of the DAW, but it's it's operational. Mm -hmm. But I mean, geez, to, to run Facebook or read email, I mean, hell, I could do that on my phone, you know, let alone an iPad or a, or a uh, you know, a, the Windows tablet. I mean, so, yes, should that even be on your DAW workstation anyway? Exactly. I don't think it should be, but hey, whatever. Yeah, that, that's cool. That's really cool. If, if it's a work tool, make it a work tool, you know, so, you know, if, if you are an engineer and that's your livelihood, that machine should be dedicated to doing its function. Great. And, and that is dedicated to, to running 
audio. Don't pollute it with all the garbage, you know. Well, I don't care if it's a Mac or if it's a PC. I mean, it, it just shouldn't be that social media and all that stuff should not be interacting, you know, with with that DAW, mm -hmm. you know, or as little as possible. Mm -hmm. Let's put it that way. Pick another box to do mm -hmm. that on. That's my opinion. Yeah, um, fine. Cool. I'm not saying you can't. You can. But I, I to me, from a safety standpoint, mm -hmm. You know, I just I wouldn't want to do it. You know, I, I and it's not safety of hacking safety. That's always a danger. The safety is I need the reliability from when my client walks in the door and I start charging him per hour. Mm -hmm. I need to make sure that he's getting his money's worth. So that's my responsibility, right, as a studio owner. So is that not, you know, the responsibility then of of Jim at Slick Audio to make sure that you're getting a machine that stays up and running constantly? Mm -hmm. Because, you know, so, so your responsibility as a mix engineer, studio owner, mm -hmm. comes back to me at the end of the day if you have my machine, mm -hmm. you know. But it, 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 along with the digital audio workstation and, the, you know, mm -hmm. and all the other pieces and, that fall in with it, whether it's Mac or not, mm -hmm. you know, you have several vendors. But still, that it's a business. Run it like one. Yes. Yes, completely agree. hundred percent. hundred percent. That's it. Thanks a lot, Jim. I'd like to open a space for people to do questions here. Uh, I, I see people talking in English on the chat, so I'm going to ask them. Hey, guys, galera, vão fazer perguntas aí. Podem fazer pergunta em português. Uh, se for o caso, eu traduzo depois. Não tem problema. Façam perguntas aí, por favor. I'm, I'm telling them to <laughs> do some questions. Asking them. Okay. Uh, we have and, I, and it's funny because your your display of the questions are is is mirrored. Oh, it's back. oh <laughs> is it? Oh, actually, I'm yeah. gonna send you. So I can't read them. So you're gonna have to read them to me. I can't. I yeah, can't read I, them. I'm gonna I'm gonna split it around. Let me just. Uh, all right, is that better? Oh, there cool, we go. Cool, cool, cool. Yeah, yeah. Uh, nice. Um, turbo Boost. Oh, what do you yeah. Thoughts about uh, JP. the Intel Turbo Boost technology? That's a good question, um, JP Marks. Much needed. Uh, much needed. Uh, JP, that definitely. Uh, turbo Boost, um, we keep it turned on. So um, it, it can definitely be a performance boost. I mean, there's times when it can be, you know, can hamper, but for the most part, uh, it, it's, it's a valuable tool. I mean, you're you're adding some throttling, you know, to the machine outside of the overclocking, right? So, um, you know, where you get those little demands, those little spikes and demands, that's where it becomes very important. And and that really comes to play, I think, in like convolution reverbs, um, you know, that are very, you know, there's space, right? So you, you have this IR, you know, this impulse response and, and, you know, in a convolution reverb, no different than the guitar cabs, you know, that we guitar players, you know, run, you know, we've got these simulators now and... Uh, I'm looking at all the boxes over there and my two notes and all that stuff. So, yeah, I think it's I think it's very uh, JP. I think it's very important um, and, and definitely comes to aid in a situation like when you have a convolution reverb or you know an impulse response that's trying to suck a lot of memory quick, mm -hmm. um, you know, or a lot of CPU quick, uh, and and even a VSTi it's trying to do the same thing. It doesn't handle the VSTi quite as well, uh, but uh, it definitely does well with like uh, you know the convolution reverbs just top of mind but any anything that's really you know has an instant demand for processing power it can give you that little spike nice cool that helps cool other hope that helps. really really well answered actually uh does anybody else has a question please vamos lá fazer perguntas galera perguntas I think people are a little slower because we we have a latency, of course. So yeah, <laughs> yeah. He, he just yeah. That's ah, it's in Vancouver. Cool. Nice, nice, GP Marcus. Nice, cool. Uh, who else? Who else is gonna do some questions? I I probably put everybody to sleep. No, 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 man. <laughs> not the guys that I that I that I invite here. Not the guys that are looking for our content. That definitely not. I, I mean, we have a lot of different contents in regards to music and audio, and uh, one of the and few ones are very technical. Like we talk about topologies of compressors and stuff like that, <laughs> and we also have the basic stuff as well. So yeah, a lot of people. Opa, João Milet Meirelles, e aí? João, tem uma pergunta para fazer, João? Ask us a question, João. 
Comment uh, There are people thinking that uh, the M1 will be like uh, changing the future of processing. Is it going to happen? Uh, <laughs> I'll believe it. I'll believe it when I see it. Yes. I'll believe it when I see it. I, I, you know, I, I'm a guy who who has very realistic or, or tends to have realistic expectations. At the end of the day, it's a computer, and and they're not. The next thing that's going to revolutionize computing, folks, is is you know, as I mentioned before, quantum computing, and and we're not there yet. Um, hopefully, we're on the the close to getting on the on the horizon of it but um i i just don't think it's going to be the end-all be-all that everybody is you know that apple's hyping it to be um guys it's a processor and it's very equivalent to the to the xeon so you'll see when you see you know and, and you know what honestly i hope i'm pleasantly surprised me too or you know not pleasantly surprised so i mean you know but I'll believe it when I see it. You know, I, Apple's thrown a lot of hype at us before and underdelivered, and and I don't want to be disappointed again. And and I'll look, and and so has the Intel world, right? You know, and generically, AMD and Intel, and they've sent us a lot of hype and said, oh, this processor is going to be the best in the world. So we revolutionized, and it's done nothing because the code wasn't written, the operating system, the program, you know, the DAW, the plugins weren't written to take advantage of it. Mm -hmm. So therefore. What are you getting? You know, so yes, <laughs> I believe it when I say it. Yeah, definitely. You need to understand the purpose. You're gonna use the same machine, right? Doesn't uh, a Lamborghini doesn't work uh, in a, how can I say a construction facility <laughs> very much? Right, like, <laughs> right. Doesn't matter if it's very powerful, not for that purpose. Yep. Uh, so I I believe when I see it as well. Uh, yeah. so so this, the six the six hundred and fifty horsepower Corvette that's in my garage, uh, if I took it out on a day like yesterday where it snowed like crazy here, um, I would be literally still sitting in the driveway spinning in circles. So, you know, if you don't have the traction, what good is it? Yes. Uh, Four wheel drive better. They are asking here, what do you think about processor Xeon, uh, Xeon uh, E five? 2678 uh, versus 2.5 gigahertz. Uh, I think version 3. Yeah. Yep, V3. V3. Yeah, 2.2 and a half yeah. gig. Yep. Uh, so, so that's 12 core, 24 thread. Um, so, 12 core really. So, so the, the 2678 E5 was a great proc. Um, that, that's going back, you know, a couple generations already now in Xeon world. So, understand. Remember when I was talking about the speed of the processor before? So you've got a 2.5 gigahertz processor that you can only overclock literally by about 100 megahertz. Mm -hmm. So 0 0.1, right? So you take it to about 2.6. Mm -hmm. Then that processor starts to overheat and become very unreliable. Um, and, and there's actually a lot more reasons just overheating why it becomes reliable, unreliable. Great processor. Don't get me wrong. Um, but comparing that today... To, to even a 10 core, you know, i9900N or a 10900X uh, processor, mm -hmm. um, which is the 10 core or even the 10, I got to get this right, 10920, mm -hmm. uh, which is the 12 core version of it, it it'll just blow it out of the water. Um, it's, it's not even, it's not even a comparison. Cool. So again, great, great proc. It's stable. It's very solid. Uh, but comparing it to the new ones uh, isn't fair. It's it's uh, much older, much lower. Cool. How new pieces of hardware uh, deal with uh, very old plugins? That's a good question. Uh, Ooh. Like waves. Yeah. <laughs> the not, not <laughs> yeah, updated it. waves plugins. Um. Well, I I guess you you have to look. At two things so you have the 32-bit and 64-bit mm -hmm. right so when I'm gonna say old I'm gonna say kind of old and deal with 32-bit plugins because the 16-bit are long dead and won't run on anything anymore um, a lot of digital audio workstations uh, most of them today will not run the 32-bit plugins they'll only run 64 so that in itself limits you Unless you run something like uh, the the VN Instruments uh, application uh, was uh, the uh, 
VE Studio, VE Pro, VE Pro. Um, I may be getting that wrong. If I did, sorry. Um, I could open up Explorer, look at it, but you know, then then you can load 32 and 64 bit plugins inside of that, and then run that instance inside your DAW. And, and whether you run it, you could even run it on a separate computer. That's really cool. You just need two copies of it, um, which really isn't that expensive, you know. But so, yeah, running old versions of that that's about the only way you're going to get away with it today is to run those older plugins, if you will, in in a different computer running something like the ePro. I see. So it, I hope that that makes sense because I know, for example, Waves. Uh, I have just upgraded to version twelve um, over at the studio, oh. and I had one of my customers just this past week go to V twelve, and uh, it it creates so many problems with interoper interoperability from the old to the new. Waves will say that it's deinstalling the plugin, the old ones, uh, automatically when you upgrade to the new version. The unfortunate reality is, is they don't do a great job of it. And I've talked to Neil and company about that. And what we're really dealing with there is the, these DLLs, where the actual plugin DLLs are still sitting mm -hmm. in the uh, VST um, uh, plugins folders. You know, so the Steinberg VST or just the VST in mm -hmm. uh, you know, a plugins folder. And it's creating problems where, you know, plugins will come up, but you don't see graphics. I see. It'll work. You can literally, like, kind of move <laughs> and you can hear stuff, you know, go. But you can't see anything. And it's all caused between DLL problems. So you got to rip all them out and then restart it again. So the, the bottom line is, 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 you know, if you have an older version of Waves, for example, since we're picking on those guys, um, and I'll have to apologize to Neil later for that. I'm looking at Chris, by the way. He, my VP of Sales and Marketing is standing over there staring no, at but me. We, like, we love Waves plugins as well. We, we, we have a, a good relationship with them as well here. We do a lot of uh, content yeah. about their new stuff. And Want to say hi to everybody? No. He says no. <laughs> <laughs> he said he'll talk to you later. <laughs> yeah. Nice. So, yeah, he's, he's not my camera-friendly guy, but... Uh, <laughs> But he, he throws a good hammer at me once in a while because I need it. Cool. But um, but yeah, so I, you know, yeah. The, so the older plugins, I mean, to reliably run them, uh, it, especially if they're 32-bit plugins, mm -hmm. that then you really are almost forced today to run either a 32-bit operating mm -hmm. system, which is crazy. I don't know why you would do that. Um, you know, <laughs> we we still have that that choice, by the way, in Windows. You know, yes. Mac doesn't. Um, I don't know why you will, but you have the choice. Uh, you limit your RAM, so, uh, you limit, limit everything, right? The usage of You limit it. everything, yeah, yeah. yeah. Hey, I have 3.6, you know, <laughs> megabytes, megabytes of RAM, or megabytes of RAM, geez, good luck. <laughs> Giga RAM, yeah. so. Giga RAM. But yeah, so, you know, you can run it. I, I would recommend just slaving them to another computer and, uh, and, and or, or running them regardless inside of something like VE Pro. Um, and that, that works phenomenal. You know, you can literally load it up with 32 and 64 bit plugins and then just dump that over into your 64 bit DAW. Cool. And then you can run it. Great. Really great. So, no, there's not much hardware that deals with the older plugins anymore, unfortunately. It's uh, death by, uh, you know, death by age. <laughs> yes. As I'm, the get, as I'm the one getting older. No, <laughs> not only you, everything is getting older. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> uh, I, uh, really, I'm really thankful for you, man, uh, to be here with us. was very, very Thank nice uh, interview. And we, we, we still have a lot of, uh, uh, you know, I mean, a big way to go still uh, to understand okay. some some few things about computer and audio, but uh, I'm quite uh, happy with it. Oh, I don't know why your signal just dropped. Yeah. I don't know why. I don't know. But yeah, I can I can see me over there, but uh, yeah, yeah, weird. I don't know. Can you yeah, hear me? I can hear you, but I don't know why your signal just dropped. Keep saying that's yeah, odd. that's really strange. Let me. Let me do it again, like, oh, all right, guy, all right, desktop, all right, okay, okay, uh, update. That's, that's Skype giving us a hard time. Probably. Yeah, probably Skype telling us, all right, guys, is enough. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Jimmy talking about it. Yeah, let's, so let's, uh, let's, 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 let's finish, finish this way. way. I, unfortunately, unfortunately, I can't help you. you. Sorry. Sorry. I'm, I'm going to try. try. 
Ah, oh, oh, man. man. Sorry, 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 sorry for, for dead. dead. So great okay. to be here. Thank you so so much. I enjoyed it, and uh, maybe we can do it very uh, nice, another very one next nice year. Very nice to have you here. Uh, was a big, big uh, way to, I mean, was a really great way to understand better the, all the functions that the computer, uh, that relies on the computers as well, because we, we simplify a lot of things and uh, I wanted to dismystify those things and I hope the guys at home really uh, understood this. And if you guys want to talk to Jim, uh, we have the link from uh, Slick Audio here, down here. You can uh, talk to Slick Audio and, uh, you know, ask any question about a computer and ask your own computer, see their products and so forth. OK, uh, I saw a lot of people around uh, the world absolutely. there. I don't know if you guys does ship to other places. You... We do. We ship. We ship all around the awesome. globe. So uh, awesome. Yep, we really, can do that. Really good. Thanks, guys. And thanks again, Jim. Uh, we see you Thank next you. time.